Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a terrible Karen employee treated me like trash, bossed me around and threw coffee in my face. She did not realize that I am her boss. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the video. So I currently own a very successful business. It was passed down to me by my father once he decided that he had enough of that life and wanted to retire. Unlike my father, however, I tend to approach things a little differently, more relaxed. The main thing being how I dress myself for a day at the office, usually just throwing on some jeans and a shirt. You will see why this is relevant later on. I've owned this business just over a year, so I'm still trying to fully understand all the roles and the ongoings in the company. Of course, I'm not a complete newbie. My father taught me everything he knew years before signing over the business. It's an IT business, to put it simply. I won't bore you with details about what we do, but just so you have a rough idea of the scale, we have over 40 office blocks in the United States, a couple more in the UK, and we employ over 15,000 people. Obviously, I don't know all of the employees and I would not even know where to begin if I tried to. I know pretty much everyone in the office I work in, in Michigan, which has just over 300 employees. Well, one of the HR teams decided that it might be wise if I start visiting the other offices to increase motivation and make them remember there actually is a boss at the top of all of this. Also, it's an excuse to get away from my computer, so I will take it. But that is where this all begins. I decided I would visit the office operations we have in Iowa, mainly because it's the closest. I strictly remember walking into that building and thinking just how clean and smart everything and everyone looked. Most people milling around looked uncomfortable and unhappy. I pride myself with the knowledge that the people in my building seem much more carefree and we have no uniform so to speak, so why everyone here was in carbon copy suits, I didn't understand. I thought that perhaps because I was visiting, they decided to dress up and maybe that would explain the tense atmosphere. But it still did not answer why everyone was in the exact same suit. Anyway, I pushed past these thoughts and carried on over to the reception desk. As I walked over, I immediately noticed the slight up and down I got from the lady I was approaching and suddenly I became very aware of how underdressed I was in comparison to everyone else. Hello, are you sure you are in the right building, sir? She asked before I could speak. I was slightly taken aback by this sudden remark but composed myself and said, um, yes, I would think so. I'm supposed to have a meeting with the office supervisor. My name is OP. I've chosen to keep my name private for this. If she knew my name and associated it with that of the CEO, she didn't show it. Instead, she sighed before tapping on the keys of her computer. Heavens no, what he needs with someone like you, she muttered to herself before speaking a bit louder. Up the stairs and to your left. Please knock before you enter. Some people might be doing important things. I nodded and walked away, slightly miffed at the attitude of that woman. The meeting just consisted of me and the supervisor just going through how they do things around here and all of that. Might I ask why is everyone wearing suits? I brought that up after all the important things were out of the way. Well, it's our uniform, I guess, he replied with a slight smile, as if there was more to it. There isn't a uniform, though. I continued and watched as he got a little uncomfortable. I raised a brow and he let out a sigh. Okay, well, well, she's lovely and all, don't get me wrong, but a lady in HR decided it was in everyone's best interest to wear uniforms. Ah, I see. And is this the normal atmosphere around the office? Everyone seems tense. I pressed on. Oh, I... Uh, yeah, I guess so. Not sure why though, he replied and I could see he was getting quite tense himself, so I didn't ask any further questions on the matter. Only one final one. Can I get her name, please? It's... Karen, leaving out her last name. I knew the HR department was part of my tour for the day and I decided I would stop there first. I knocked on the door and was greeted by a cheery woman who asked if I wanted a drink or anything. I assumed she was just kissing up but then I realized she would have no way of knowing who I was and that she just must be a lovely lady, I will remember that for later. Excuse me, who are you and why are you in here? Another woman asked, walking over from her desk. Well, I began, but she was in no rush to hear me out. You cannot be in here. Hell, you cannot even be in this whole building. What are you doing? She glared at me with fiery eyes. Before I could respond, her phone rang at her desk and she rushed over to answer it. 
She's a little bit, um, the other girl spoke as she came back with the tea I'd asked for. I got what she meant. So why are you here? She asked in a much more friendly manner than the other woman. I explained that I was the CEO and showed my badge, etc. And she immediately flushed red and started apologizing for being unprofessional in her mannerisms. I of course chided her for this and unprofessionality is my specialty. Once she had finished her phone call, the other woman stormed back over. I see you didn't leave. I will take a large latte. What? I asked her dumbfounded. She rolled her eyes. Make me a coffee, she ground out condescendingly, clapping in between each word. No, I replied. No? Okay, well then. She walked over to the coffee machine and began making her own coffee. I guess you could fetch some lunch. I will take a cream cheese bagel from the bakery two blocks down the street. I'm not running any errands for you. This woman was clearly having a power trip here. Listen here, boy. I don't know who you think you are, but you cannot barge your way into this building and this room where we are trying to get some serious business done, dressed as a bum and not run errands for us. Consider it a favor that we are even giving you things to do. Isn't this the HR department? I asked. Yes, your point. Did you take a wrong turn on your way to the janitor's office? She chuckled. First, there's nothing wrong with being a janitor. It's an honest job. Secondly, if this is the HR department, there shouldn't be much serious business to deal with. She visibly was angered. You're really getting on my nerves. Fetch me my bagel right this instance. No. Ah, why is it so hard for you insolent kids to obey me? Get me the damn bagel. Um, no. Her face reddened. Before I knew what was happening, she threw her freshly poured cup of boiling hot coffee on my face. I screamed as my face burned. I knew at the time it would leave a nasty scar for who knows how long. Hearing the scream, a few people ran in, one of them being the supervisor. Oh my god, are you okay, boss? Okay, clearly not. I will call an ambulance. Boss? The woman asked, cup still in hand. Yes, boss. You are aware the CEO was visiting today, right? Another person piped up. She was silent, staring down at me. She walked off and came back with some paper towels. Of course I knew. I'm so sorry, sir. I must have been watching where I was going and tripped up. Don't you lie. You threw it at him. The nicer woman piped in, hands on hips. I was still in agony at this point, not really hearing what was going on. Moments later, I was ushered and half carried downstairs and into an ambulance, eyes pressed against my face. The only thing I do fully remember was my attacker following me downstairs, explaining to everyone she could what happened. Of course, it was her version of the story, damage control. The woman ended up coming with me to the hospital. If I wasn't in such pain, I would have refused. The supervisor and more friendlier HR woman also came with me. Officers, what are you doing here? She asked as two cops came into the hospital room I'd been stationed in. We were called. As it turns out, the other HR lady called the police and told them everything. Ma'am, is your name Karen? One of the officers asked and it all clicked into place. This was the woman the supervisor seemed to blame for the tense atmosphere in the building. It makes sense. Yes. Officer, as you can see, our wonderful boss here has been badly injured by some coffee. Such a tragedy, I know. Karen replied her voice was wavering and I could see her eyes well with tears as she realized she was done for. You are coming with us. We have seen the footage. Karen's face paled in realization. She had clearly forgotten about the cameras stationed in their office. You cannot do this. It's not my fault the CEO dresses like a bum. Anyone would have had the same reactions and you know it. She ended up being dragged out of the room and in a fit of rage she flipped over one of the nurse's trolleys which ended up only causing her difficulties as a scalpel was flung into the air and gave her a nasty gash on the arm. After this whole fiasco, I did a little digging into her and that branch of the company. As it turns out, hundreds of complaints were made against her by lots of other employees, but as she was the head of HR, they would not get any further than her. I also found out that the lady that helped me at the reception was her sister, which makes a lot of sense. They were both fired for their attitude and behavior. I organized that the other woman in HR got a promotion and a nice bonus alongside it. I did end up with a bit of a scar on my face, but luckily it should be gone within a year. Karen ended up getting sentenced to a significant amount of time behind bars, and I can only hope that straightens her out. Maybe she will also attempt to boss around her fellow inmates, and I'm sure she will learn a lesson from that pretty quickly. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. There has been a long dispute with my neighbor about who actually owns my back garden. However, there is no dispute really. The county office has the property plans that clearly show the borders of the garden, but my neighbor who fancies himself a bit of a historian once found the original property plans which showed his property owned my garden like way back in the 1800s or something. 
I have no idea why, but at some point in the 1970s, this was corrected. Anyway, my neighbor was so convinced that he owned my back garden that he went to court over it. Not some big time Supreme Court and a hundred lawyers type of thing, just me and him tipping up the civil disputes and the judge dismissing the case literally five minutes later. He was not happy about this and refused to listen to reason. I got the impression that he thought I had somehow cheated him out of a minor victory as he would not let it alone, not even when the court ordered him to drop it. I did not think there was anything malicious about it, he would adopt a rather passive-aggressive attitude towards me when we were forced to interact but the rest of the time he would just ignore me. I was fine with that, it meant he didn't keep bugging me about he owns my garden way back in the 1800s. So months went by where I didn't hear anything from him and I thought the matter finally resolved and we could get on with our lives. It even reached a point where we tolerated each other's company, though he still refused to talk to me. The rest of his family was fine with me, they knew he was being a big baby, he had a daughter, about 15 at the time, and she got on with my own daughter who was 14, so being that close in age they had quite a bit in common. My daughter would often invite his daughter over to lounge by the pool on hot summer days or when we had a family and friends barbecue. We always extended an invitation to the neighbors, but he never came. He must have thought that we were mocking him or something. His wife and daughter always came over though and constantly apologized for his childishness. I don't know why, but it really bothered me. I wanted to get along with him, but his stubbornness made it very hard. Fast forward about six months, it's the height of summer and we decide to have a family day out at the local water park. I know it might seem strange that people who own a pool would go to a water park to cool off, but we have a death slide or a water slide known as the black hole. Which is just a slide that completely shuts out the light so you have no idea which way you're going. We've been going there ceremoniously every year since my daughter was seven, it's practically a family tradition at this point. She gathers together some of her friends and we head out. The wife likes to lounge by the pool with all the other moms and I hit the tiki bar with some of the other dads. It's one of those bars situated in the actual pool and you are sitting in the water as you are getting decidedly drunk in the hot sun and cool water. It was a great day as it always is and by the time we made it home sometime in the evening I had quite the drunken haze going on. Not to the point where I was stumbling all over the place, but just enough that I was noticeably slurring my words. When the taxi dropped us off outside our house, I got confused because I could still hear the sounds of the water park. People laughing and having a good time, splashing water and the like. My wife indicated that she could hear the same and pointed out that one of the neighbors must have been throwing a pool party. It's not uncommon and I'm not the only one with a pool here. Thinking nothing of it, we head into the house and get all the wet clothes in for a wash. The washing machine and stuff is located in a utility closet on the side of the house. It's a pokey little room with a window that looks out into the back garden. It does not span the whole side of the house, so most of the garden is obscured by the side of the house. I remember dumping my stuff into the washing machine and as I stand back up to stretch my back, I look out of the window in time to see a girl in a bikini and damp hair quickly jump into view and out again, quickly followed by the sound of a splash. I only saw the back of the girl and I remember thinking why my daughter and her friends were now swimming in the pool. That was when I heard the wife call out to me. She sounded pretty distraught and I rushed her in the kitchen. She was staring out into the back garden and when I looked too, I could see that it was not my daughter and her friends going for a secondary dip, but it was a whole host of other high schoolers and a few parents and that's when I saw him, my neighbor. By my wife's reaction, I figured she had not given him permission to use our pool while we were away, so I called down my daughter who also said she didn't tell the neighbor's daughter that she could use the pool while we were away. Fuming, I went outside to confront the guy and as I got out into the garden, I saw the extent of the damage he had caused. To make access easier, he had completely torn down the fence so that his garden and my garden was one big garden. There were kids ranging from 15 to 18 having quite the pool party, I was impressed by the setup, not so impressed by the damage. 
What really struck me was the amount of alcohol on hand, not just in the hands of the grown-ups but in the hands of the kids too. I could see his daughter necking a bottle of fruity vodka juice mix and I knew she was no older than 16. I confronted my neighbor and with both of us being mildly drunk it was not long before the confrontation escalated into rowdy slurred shouts. He had the audacity to accuse me of ruining his daughter's birthday celebration while I was pointing out the fact that he had destroyed my garden. I think he must have told his wife that I had given him permission to use my garden because she was just as stunned as I was and he went from red-faced agitation towards me to baby-faced pleading with his wife when she screamed at him. You told me he was fine with it, you mended bridges, sort of thing. His wife stormed off and so did I, I didn't want to make a scene in front of all these drunk adolescent girls and boys. They were starting to take notice and we were drawing a crowd. In the end, I decided to let the police handle it. I went inside and dialed 911. By the time they had arrived, the kids realized the party was over and they were drying themselves off getting ready to leave. There were a couple of people who managed to escape before the police arrived, but once they got there, no one was allowed to go anywhere until names, contact info and key statements were taken. Well, apparently serving alcohol to minors was a serious offense, not to mention the destruction of public and private property, trespass and the like. My neighbor was looking at some serious time if things did not go his way in court. As it stood, once all the witness statements were taken, the adults were shipped off to county, the kids were taken home and I was left with quite the mess to clean up. In the end, my neighbor was fined nearly 5 grand for serving alcohol to minors on top of being charged another grand for destruction to private property and a whole year in prison. Not to mention regular visits from social services to ensure their daughter was not at risk. I feel kind of bad about it now, getting all them kids and their parents in trouble. It was not their fault that my neighbor was a childish a-hole. But Reddit, am I the a-hole for getting everyone arrested? And yeah, ripe stars, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you think that OP is the a-hole for getting these trespassers arrested or not? And the next one is a revenge story. I would start by saying that I work for my dad at his store, I work the front counter and I interact with most people and customers. Also, I look a lot more like my mom, my dad runs a separate business as well, but anybody who needs to talk to him for either business can usually find him in the office here. So this guy shows up this morning looking pretty ruffled and asks if my dad was here. I replied, you just missed him. He is out for the morning doing a couple of things. He was very displeased by this information and was acting very loud and unprofessional. He started looking around the store and eventually came back to the front counter with a piece of equipment that he wanted to trade for some work that he apparently did for him before. Keep in mind, I know most of my dad's workers and have never seen this guy before. I told him that I don't do any negotiation while he's not here and I cannot just let him leave the store with something for free. I told him that normally he probably wouldn't want to take that route but he was welcome to discuss it with my dad once he is back. He looked at me and replied, you're making a big mistake here, you must not know him very well because he would do this for me and blah blah blah. I just looked at him and replied, actually I do know him quite well, seeing as he's my father. I told him that he could either leave or wait for my dad to come back. He kinda looked up at me and was pretty speechless, I could tell he felt stupid and regretted his comment. He ended up waiting around in his truck for my dad to show up and guess what, he was not gonna do a trade. It's almost like I know my boss well. Apparently the guy just worked like two days for him and then quit. Plus the thing he wanted was way more expensive than what he was owed. Side note, the pay wasn't made yet because we are bi-weekly, I swear some of the people around here are nuts. But a petty, don't you know who I am, moment made my day. And the next one is titled, Revenge Story Number 2. Okay, so I am a practicing accountant. I cannot really identify the country for confidentiality purposes. I had a very dear client who was in the latter stages of cancer. As his condition worsened, we were contacted by the government for an audit. I submitted what I could, but without his assistance, critical pieces of information would be missing. I called the auditor and let her know the situation. Literally, without even thinking, she said, since you're avoiding me, I will just disallow everything and find against him. I immediately demanded her name and her government ID, you're not intimidating me, she said as she gave me her info. I put my practice on hold and asked my client's wife if I could get into her husband's office and search for the documents. With the help of my wife, his wife and his two daughters, we got absolutely everything. 
I held off until the auditor made good her threat and then I launched an appeal. In that appeal I presented all of the documents and my client, although having passed by that time, was in the clear and there would be no government claims against his estate. I then ended the appeal with the following, due to the auditor's inhuman treatment of my client and her despicable actions, I hereby demand her termination. There was a crap storm that followed. First her supervisor calls me, tells me that I cannot demand her termination. I tell him to F off and then the shop steward tells me that she is union and they don't get to fire his people. I tell him that she violated several of their stated parameters and she can be terminated for cause. Then I get the deputy head of taxation for our region. He takes time and listens and says that it's difficult but I should not expect that she loses her job. The final call is her, how dare. She lost her job, she is an immigrant to our country and her husband will beat her for losing her job. How can I do this to her? What has she done that was so bad? I basically told her that in this country we treat our dying people with dignity. That her actions warranted losing her job and I hope her pension and benefits. She told me she was a year from retirement and she lost her pension. Oh, I'm sorry, guess that money would be better spent on a human. And yeah, ripe stars, let me know in the comments what you think about this story. Do you think that Karen got what she deserved or not? Anyway, the next one is a story from r slash am I the jerk and it starts like this. I, 27 male, just moved into my new house a couple of months ago in a nice neighborhood. It was a house my late uncle was renting out and left it to me. The neighbors next door have two kids ages 8 and 11. When I first moved in I started taking up painting outside, not a professional, but I used to love it in high school so I decided to try it again since I'm not really busy with work and have the free time. The boys would notice me outside in the afternoons and the eldest asked me once if they could borrow my paint so they can make something too. And that's where it started. I'm a kids guy and I hope to have my own one day so I let them start coming over to paint after they were done with school. We got along great and they enjoyed learning how to paint. Their mom hangs around when I am outside with them to look at their work and I would chat with her. This has been an everyday thing for the last couple of months, well until a few weeks ago when the dad approached me. This is the second time I've seen him since I moved, he never leaves the house even when they do. He was really mad because he didn't appreciate me flirting with his wife in front of his own house. And also does not like that I'm using his kids just to talk to her. This caught me by surprise, I've never behaved in any way that would be inappropriate around her. Most of our talks are about her kids or everyday stuff. I did try to explain and apologized if I crossed any lines, but he just said to keep my distance from his family. So that's what I ended up doing. When the kids would come over, I would tell them that I'm stuck with work stuff. It makes me sad to bum them out, but I didn't want to overstep with their dad. Then on Friday, neighbor's wife came out while I was watering my lawn. She said she hopes they did not bother me too much and was sorry if they took up so much of my time. It's because she thought I stopped having the kids over because I was tired of them or something. I didn't want her feeling bad since it probably seemed that way with how I abruptly ended the painting sessions. So I told her that her husband didn't seem happy about it and he asked me to keep my distance. Didn't go into details, I only said I didn't want to upset him. It was obvious she didn't know from her reaction but she thanked me for telling her. But that just seemed to make things worse because he came at me this morning even worse than before. He was beyond pissed that I told her anything and now it's my fault that they had a fight. Now I feel really awful, I hate conflicts and the last thing I wanted was to make my new neighbors hate me for causing them issues. Thinking back now, should I have told her anything? I really didn't want any issues but ended up doing that anyways. So Reddit, was I the a-hole for the way I handled things here and causing them problems? And yeah ripe stars, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Personally I would say that OP is absolutely not the a-hole. I would say he handled this situation quite diplomatically but I guess the neighbors have some sort of issues in their relationship and OP is definitely not at fault here. Anyway, a common set, not the a-hole. Her husband could have addressed this with his partner directly, instead he wanted to play sneaky and pulled some macho crap on you without having to actually address his own wife. That means he know it's wrong, at least on some level, she needed to know, don't take it personally. Chances are the dude was threatened because he envies the time you spend with his family. Common number two, not the a-hole, the husband is trying to control his wife in a roundabout manner. Instead of talking to her like a grown-up and having an actual conversation, he has jumped to his own conclusion and felt the need to mark his territory. 
absolutely ridiculous. She is allowed to talk to another guy, especially a neighbor, who is entertaining her kids. It is good that she knows he went behind her back and if there are any conflicts, he brought it on himself. I'm sorry you and the kids got stuck in the middle of it though. Hopefully he will relax and you can go back to the way things were. But until then, I would stay clear of them. He sounds aggressive, better safe than sorry. The next one is titled Revenge on Boss That Stole From Me. This is a long one from a few years back when I was a teen working at a generic fast food restaurant while in school. I was 16 at the time and had been working at this store for a year or so. We had this supervisor who was just horrible to work for, he would leave us while we were packed with customers and sit on his phone talking the whole shift only to come out to bark orders and abuse us for not working hard enough. Eat the food we were cooking and when customers complained he would belittle us in front of them, blaming our attitude. Now everyone hated this guy, even the other supervisors hated him. He was just lazy and to be completely honest, I think he only had the job because his uncle owned the store. He would come in to start his shift, plant his butt in the office and would not come out unless it was to tell you how bad you are and how he is not afraid to replace you. And wow guys, that definitely sounds like a healthy office culture and surely I would love to work for that douchebag. We were all teens working that needed the money for our families and he knew this and would hold our jobs over our head. The store was in a bad area and we were all either supporting our families or trying to stay out of gangs and whatnot. The store is open until late so we can get good hours in after school. Well, this one particular night we were very short-handed. It was me, my workmate Joe and supervisor, me and Joe assumed he would back us up and serve customers while I cooked and Joe made all the burgers and wraps. But no, he came in, planted his ass in the office and told me to cook as well as do burgers and wraps and Joe will serve. I protested and said it was too much for me to cover. He completely ignores me and acts as if he did not hear a word I said. So I protest a little louder and no joke, he turns to me and says, well if you don't like it, you can kiss this job goodbye. I bit my tongue and return to my duties pissed off. Joe was pissed off too, he knew that if supervisor ran things this way, he would receive all the abuse as he was the person out front serving. Like I said, we were in a bad area. Customers often came in drunk and irritable, there is often fights and we get a lot of homeless people loitering and junkies. He knew he was going to get abused by someone tonight who would possibly throw something at him. Fast forward a few hours into our shift and we are in the middle of our dinner rush. There is a crap load of orders to be made and not enough meat cooked to make it all. Customers are complaining about waiting times, I can hear Joe out the front getting absolutely destroyed by the growing mob of angry customers whom he is doing his best to keep calm. Supervisor for the first time the entire shift comes out to see what is happening. He sees the mob of angry customers who are starting to shout in anger, hurling insults and all. He goes out to confront them and calls me to the front. As soon as I am inside of the mob and supervisor, he starts to berate me, throwing a thousand questions at me at once. Why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? Abused me further. Then calls Joe over, abuses us both and tells the customers that he is sorry we are so incompetent and pulls us both out back. If you two don't lift your game, you won't be working here any longer and just because you fell so far behind, I'm taking tonight's pay from you. At this point, I wanted to kill him. We were working our asses off while short-handed and he did not lift a finger to help us. I would not let this slide. It lit a fire in me and I was going to make sure I got paid for tonight no matter what. So I plotted. I planned. I concocted a most evil plan in my pot of payback potions and would soon conjure it into existence. I even asked Joe for help with it and he agreed willingly once I told him the plan. This plan would make us legends of our store. Executing the plan. After the rush was over and we were about to close shop, I went on my break. Remember how I said we had a lot of homeless people loitering? Well, I'm thankful we did. While I was on my break, I convinced a homeless man to come and take a dump in the urinal in our bathroom and I would get him some free food. He laughed at me at first and asked if I was serious. It took a little convincing as he would not believe someone was asking him to do something he usually does without being asked or offered food for. He agrees after a bit but I told him I would have to sneak him in with the help of Joe. 
So I bring him to the slide doors and signal Joe to distract the supervisor long enough for him to turn his head from the computer screen and cameras. We then slip in and make it to the bathroom. When we get there, I tell him to go in and do the deed while I go make his food. He giggles and agrees and heads in. I head to the kitchen where Joe is and tell him the job is underway and I will need a distraction to get him out once he is done. Joe tells me he will go to tell the supervisor that he is leaving, it will give me a moment to get him out back quick. I make the guy's food and head back to the bathroom entrance, but he is still not out. I was waiting a good 10 minutes, he had been in there for over 20 minutes. When he exited, I caught a whiff of the most foul odor seeping from the bathroom. What the hell dude, what did you do in there? He tells me he may have missed a bit, but job's done, more or less. I give his food to him and signal Joe to distract again. Once he does, I sneak the old guy out of the store and thank him for his help, to which he replies, I've been asked some weird crap, but you kids are messed up. I wasn't about to let him steal my pay from me, I was going to make him pay for it. So I head back to the bathroom to check and I tell you, I could not have asked the guy to do a better job. I was aiming for a stool and a puddle, but this was something else. It had overflown out of the urinal, down the wall and on the floor, it was everywhere. Joe swings by on his way out and couldn't believe what he was seeing. I then shook his hand and said to him, it was a pleasure to work with you and good luck. He leaves and I go to confront the supervisor. Once I reach the office, I let everything go on him. I swore at him, told him I quit, Joe's gone home, I'm leaving, nothing has been cleaned for clothes and someone pooped in the urinal again. He begged me not to leave while I laughed at him manically. I told him to piss off. You wanna take my pay? Take the job too. Have fun scraping poop off the wall. I threw my shirt at him, walked out and never went back. I heard from Joe that supervisor was there all night cleaning everything and was forced to clean the bathroom. Everyone except supervisor knows what I did and cheered for me for doing it. I went down in store history for the next year because it closed after that and was replaced by another generic fast food store. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.